What's up, guys? Um, I took like a two week break. I'm sorry. I'm back. Um, my name is Lauren Gardner. I'll make sure I have volume. Um, and I have a lot of words to say today. Um, this video is inspired by this tragedy that took place a um, couple days ago. So I'm just going to talk about that and the hope that we can bring to this world. All right, so my sister, um, she grew up with this friend. They were really good friends in elementary school. And then they went to different middle schools. They like drifted, you know, they didn't have a fight or anything. They just they stopped being friends. And um, I like asked her, I remember like clearly like asking about her like a couple years ago. And Leah like, was like, she turned into a, and you know, fill in your favorite non-Christian word there. And I didn't think much of it. I followed her on Instagram. She like was a cheerleader. I was like, oh, she be popular, you know, just kind of whatever. Became, you know, went that way. Whatever, like life goes on. And so the, yesterday morning, my mom actually told me that the night before, her, um, so two days ago, not from right now, her mom died. And I was like, oh, like, that's so sad. And then her mom, like, my mom continued to tell me more that, like, um, this girl's parents got divorced and her mom kind of just, like, spiraled down and she got addicted to, like, really heavy drugs. Like, she was doing heroin. And so, um, her ex-husband, like, had to get a restraining order against her and, like, for the kids so they didn't see her mom. And... She ended up, like, I guess, like, dying, yeah, overdosing or something, like, and dying. And so I just, like, the first thing I thought was that, like, how, like, we just don't know what's going on in people's lives. Like, this girl, she was my sister's age, so she's 16. Um, She has a little sister who's 14 and a little brother who's four. Um, And, like, yeah, so she might be this, like, not nice person, but how many people do you think, like, knew what was going on in her life like how many people do you think like really knew like that she was being the mom for her little siblings and that she was probably struggling with the fact that her mom wasn't there and her mom was off like doing all these things like we it's so easy for us to like look at people and be like well that kid like that's the weird kid that's the, he's weird and I don't want to deal with him or he's really annoying or she's really annoying or she just she just doesn't know it all she just always has to act like she knows everything she does it like but we don't know what's going on in people's lives we don't know what they're going through every single person that I have met and I've had the privilege of talking to and getting to know on a deeper level there's always been something that like I didn't expect to come out I didn't expect like that was going on in their lives and when we walk through schools and we walk through the streets, we need to look at every person and realize we have no idea what they're going through. And so while that doesn't give somebody the right to be mean, it should give us, like, it should open our hearts, expand, expand our hearts for them and give us a new understanding that, like, yeah, they might be this adjective, whatever they're being, but, like, I have no idea what they've been through or what they're going through. And so I'm just going to like love on them. I'm just going to die to myself and accept them for who they are. Because yeah, like she might have been what, you know, what my sister called her. But like she was living this life that I'm sure nobody knew about and that she probably didn't have like much help navigating. And so my second part to this video is that as my hope is coming up, it is, is, this is, it is Sunday right now for me. You'll see this on Wednesday, but, oh, no, there's no kidding. Um, <laughs> as my hope is coming up two weeks from today, like this girl, like there is a girl in Shen right now who needs this hope, who doesn't know what she needs. She's heartbroken. She's going through a tragedy. She like, her world has just been flipped upside down. She just doesn't know what she needs. But she goes to Shen. And right down the road, in two weeks, there's going to be a night where we are talking about and presenting people with this hope. And there, there are so many people in Shen and Boston Spa and all these other schools, I can't even list them all, around this region that 
filled with kids who need this hope. And some kids aren't going to get asked. And that makes me want to cry in a, and curl up in a ball and just, yeah, and just cry. Because it's so easy. Like, when you look at this story, what does it matter if you ask and they say no, like, at least you ask. At least you're offering them and you're giving them an opportunity to say yes. You're, you're allowing God to, like, do his work and soften their hearts and accept your invitation. But if they're not asked, then they can't. They're not going to go. They don't know about it. They don't know when it's happening. They don't know what it is. They're not just going to show up alone. They're not, like, this, this is high school. They're not just going to show up if they weren't invited. We have nothing to lose as Christians. We are already in heaven. We are already going to spend eternity with God. But these people have everything to lose when we choose not to talk about our faith and invite them to things like church and these events like Prime Time and The Avenue and whatever youth group you attend, if you even attend a youth group. But, like... We have such, we have this gold mine. We have this hope that can change the world and we keep it to ourselves because we're insecure and nervous and that makes so much sense. But we don't need to be because people are hurting and broken and they're looking for things to help them and heal them. And when we're like, hey, listen, we have this. You can totally say no, but I just want to let you know about it then you're just, you're opening up their lives to be changed by God the same way he's changed yours. And that's, that's truly amazing. It's what we are, it's what we're commanded to do. All right, I'm going to take a breather on that. So I like, I stopped the video because I was talking a lot. I have no idea what I said. None of this is scripted. I didn't have that written down anyway. I just started going. So I don't know what I said. But I felt like that was pretty spirit-led, so I'm not going to go back and watch it. I'm just going to trust that what was said what needed to be said. So the point of this video, just want you to know, you never know what's going on. And the people, your classmates, the people you sit next to and the walk through the hallways and pass by day after day, they are hurting. They are they are broken and they are, they are going through, through things that you couldn't imagine, just like you're going through things that they couldn't imagine. And I just want to remind you, God doesn't give you a spirit of fear. He doesn't. He, he wants you to be brave. That is the devil getting in your head and saying, don't ask them. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to say no. I want to tell you who, who cares if they laugh at you. Who cares if they say no? Because honestly, the chances are they might actually say yes or at least be quite interested in it. Um, we live in America. We're lucky. The worst thing that can really happen is that we get laughed at. We don't have to worry about being killed for our faith. That got really, that got really aggressive really fast. I'm just thinking of the New Testament and like other countries where like Christians are persecuted for their faith, but we're blessed to live in America. And so just go for it. Just invite your friends to my hope or my hope preview this like, upcoming Sunday because you don't, you could change their eternity. And when you see your friends stand. And then, and then you realize that that means they're going to be in heaven with you for eternity. It makes it all worth it. Um, the girl who I was talking about earlier, I actually, I messaged her on Instagram, which my sister will, would probably kill me if she, no, she wouldn't. She would just be like, why'd you do that? But I was like, hey, um, I'm Lauren. I used to play with my sister. I just want to let you know I'm so heartbroken over like what happened to your family and that I'm praying for you and then I um said I just want you to know I'm sure that you already have a wonderful community right now supporting you but that there is a community at, pro at this thing called prime time that would love to just be there for you and just be so be your community that would love to just be there for you right now in this time and there's actually um November 12th there's actually a new, um, it's like a big event, so there's going to be a bunch of new people, so if you'd love to stop in and just like hear what we have to say, I think you'd have a lot of fun, and you wouldn't be the first, only new person, and you and your sister can come, and um, I was paraphrased from my sister, like, I was choppy, and, but like, 
and um, we'll see what she says. And like, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird that I messaged her. She probably doesn't really. She might remember. She she stepped on a nail at my house. She probably remembers me because we had to take her like the hospital. But um, but I guess went for it because what she like the work she does right now. Like she's pretty vulnerable right now. So I think she might answer. But the worst that happens like is she doesn't answer me. But like at least she like noticed knows that somebody out there cares about her and loves her and that there's this thing that she could come to later on maybe when she's ready. And um, another kid who I'm closer with, I wanted him to come so badly, so I offered him fifty dollars to come, and he's coming. So like, you know, do what you gotta do. But for all these things, like I prayed before, like a lot. And I was like, I pray they have a soft heart when I ask them. I pray that you soften their heart to me asking them. And so it wasn't just like I was jumping in, you know? You gotta like, before you go in on your land attack, you gotta send in your aerial attack. And prayer's your aerial attack, man. It really is. You know, you send it in ahead. And yeah. All right. This was a wild video. I was about to go take a nap and I was like, no, I feel like I have things to say. And so that is my, that is my Lauren Gardner, the most Lauren Gardner-esque pep talk you will probably ever hear. All right, I love you all. I hope this was helpful or inspiring. Go out there and be bringers. Warriors, war, worry, not warriors, warriors of Christ. All right, I am sleep deprived because I was on Escape the Island last night. I love you all. I will see you next week, but I will see you and your friends and my hope. <laughs> Gardner out. <laughs>